Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm Jennifer Ann Rogers, and this is Star Season Star Breeds on YouTube, Facebook, and social media. Um, today, I wanted to share with you some of the apps I use for the Eclipse. I think they're really helpful, but in no way am I associated with these apps. I just want to make that clear, but um, they're free, and and I think they're really helpful. So I'm going to go over those. Uh, the first one's the Daft Moon Phase app by Avenji. Dorishenko. <laughs> um, I'm not sure where he's from, but I think these are both from Germany. And Wolfgang Zima, the Mobile Observatory Astronomy app. Um, yeah, this is both a free and a paid version. It's the only app I've really ever paid for. But real quick, I'm going to show you what it looks like on my phone, and then um, I'm going to connect my phone to the computer so you can see. Uh, more. I just want to ask everybody to like, share, and subscribe if you like this video. I'm going to have a lot more videos coming up, and we're going to look at what um, what this eclipse means for astrology and for our soul's purpose and spiritually. Okay, so I have an Android phone. phone. Um, some of you that have um, Apple iPhones, um, you can also get these uh, apps for those. Um, just go to your Apple store. Um, yeah, so on the main page of my phone, I have all my widgets. And all you do here is just click onto your screen, go down here to widgets, and look for your... Yeah, Moon has a lot. It has 10, 10 of the widgets. And they're all pretty different. You can see the moon phases with the sun. I use two of them. I use this one, the Daft Sky, and this uh, uh, the moon phase one. So right here, you can just click on that, and it'll take you. And you put it on a blank screen if you want. And you can adjust the size, but it takes you to this, and I click all of them, so I know where all the planets are at. As you know, that the planets are going to be in alignment for the eclipse, but not really. Um, I'll show you why, at least where I'm at. So right now, oops, let me go back real quick. So you can make it any size you want. Make it real big. And it's about, let's see, 6 o'clock in the evening on Sunday before the eclipse. So you can see the planets are in alignment as we're looking at them right now. And I'll show you. So what you have to do is just go and you click on that. And it'll go to what it's going to be, this page. I have it set up so it goes straight to the lunar nodes. And the lunar nodes are what? Um, makes an eclipse happen. Um, there is an ascending node and a descending node, and we'll get more into that. But first, I wanted to show you how to set up this app um, with your settings. So you can um, set your uh, the very first thing you want to do is set where you're at for the eclipse, and that's your location. So we're going to go to the settings. The very first thing. And that's on the, up here in the right-hand corner. And you go down to settings. And you go to location. And mine is set for Lowell Observatory because I live in northern Arizona. I always set my astronomy and, and astrology apps for an observatory close by. And so that's the closest one to me, or at least the biggest one. So I set that for Lowell. I'm going to switch over to my phone on my computer. It's really cool how you can link your phone to Windows. So, um, so the Daft Moon, uh, we start here. Um, when you open up your app, it'll go to this page. And then up here, we go to uh, this menu in, in the upper left corner. And it shows you all these cool things, the phases of the, uh, I guess the moon, yeah. Uh, where the super moons are, and you can look at all these. That shows you like 
uh, one of the widgets that you can put on your on your main screen of your phone. And I start mine, of course, the lunar nodes. And the ascending node is in, or the eclipse, the solar eclipse is going to be, is in Pisces. And the descending node is right across from Pisces in Virgo, is the descending node. This is known as Rahu and Ketu, which are um, the future, your future self and your past self. So your past life has to deal with the descending node. Okay, I'll talk about that more in a video about your soul purpose. Um, has to do with the nodes of the moon that happen in your birth year. So if you are 60, wait a minute. No, if you are between the ages of 18 and 21, 36 and 39, 54 and 57, 72 and 75, or 90 and 93, this, this is your eclipse. It goes by your birthday year. And I suggest doing both Western and Sidereal. That's how I've been guided. So let's look at the eclipse, which is pretty awesome. This um, this part of the app is cool. It shows you exactly what it looks like. Um, so like the lunar eclipse here in uh, northern Arizona wasn't wasn't very spectacular. <laughs> it was a penumbral eclipse. Um, you could see the shadow up here. Um, that's what it looked like here in northern Arizona. So it's very important to um, go to your settings first and put exactly where you're going to be at. I forgot to mention, you can also um, add different places that you're at when you have your location. You can also have it, obtain it. So if you go to see the eclipse somewhere else, um, like I wanted to go to San Antonio to watch it because my cousin lives there, but we didn't make it. So you can, or you can choose from a map to wherever the eclipse is at. Um, that's also an option. So let's go back to the eclipse. So this is what it'll look like in September. The lunar eclipse will be, you know, a partially um, blood moon. And then uh, the annual annular eclipse. Um, I won't be, we won't be able to see it here. But let's look at our eclipse, uh, the Great American Eclipse. Where I'm at, it's only going to be partial. So uh, right here is where where it's going to look like where I'm at. And these are the times. This is really helpful. So between 10.12 and 12.30 um, is how long the eclipse will last where I'm at. Um, because it slows, slowly... The moon will slowly cross the sun at a really weird angle. And it gives you an example of that, which is really cool. So let's see that. So here's the example. And all you do is and it tells you the time down here and the date. And then it's going to be partial. So you go and um, press play. And it's going to show you exactly what the eclipse is going to look like where I'm at. So right there is where the total eclipse happens. And then the moon will move across and across the sun or the shadow. So that's going to be really cool. But it's going to take like two hours. <laughs> so if you're using a camera, you, um, you're going to be there for a while take your pictures. I suggest just watching it on TV. But I'm going to try and get my GoPro out there and use that at like a slow speed to get it. I don't know if it'll record for two hours though. I don't know if I have enough memory for that, but I'm gonna try it just to see if I can do it and see if it works in slow motion at a, a high speed or I'm not sure how it works, but I gotta look at my GoPro. Anyway, um, so that's what it's gonna look like. Let's see it once again. Oh, I already do it once, twice. This is what it's gonna look like in Arizona and all the other states in the path that are like 50% or something. That's what it's going to look like for the partial eclipse. Now worldwide, it has some maps that you can look at. I suggest the Google map because you can really um, close up, close in and see all the states. The simple world map looks like this. 
and you can kind of move it around and you'll see that no other countries over here are going to be able to see it but you can also move it across and see where it starts and so that's pretty cool now somebody asked me about why is it start in mexico and then go this way the sun's not going in that direction um it's just the the shade of the moon or yeah the shadow of the moon and so when the sun and moon are coming across here it's the shadow that begins over here that while they're setting plus the mood the moon's nodes also are um in retrograde they go in the opposite direction um you can always and you can also yeah i guess that's as far as you can move it so that's how far the eclipse will reach that's just with a basic map but you can go over here and see again the google map let's look at the times um i guess worldwide this is what they'll see it Oh, I'm not sure what the times are. You'll have to see the time what the times are in your city. I'm not sure about other cities. So this is as far out as I can get, but it'll go closer in, which is really cool about this app. And this app is free again. So um, for it to have all these features, I think it's pretty awesome. So you'll see where it's going to start down in uh, Mexico. Pretty close to Mazatlan, up through here, and so in Arizona, you see we're pretty far away from, from and it shows, you know, exactly where I'm at with that marker. But you can like zoom in on the states that it's going to be in, like everybody was talking about, um, how it's going through. Nineveh and some other place, Jonah. I couldn't find him on here, but maybe you can if you know exactly where it's at. And some say that the path may change. I'm not sure. I'm going to just go with the flow and, and say that these maps are correct. Um, if not, go to Eclipse Wise. And I've also posted um, the maps on Star Season Star Breeds um, Facebook group page. And I will also be posting it on just the main page, Star Season Star Breeds page, and um, Divine Feminine, Divine Union page. So that's the map for the eclipse. Um, if you want to see what the plans, uh, or what the planets look like. Oh, another feature on this I really like is um, the planetary. Well, the diagrams too. The best one is the zodiac signs. So that shows you up here. I think this is Western. And then down here is going to be the sidereal. So you'll see Pisces. Hmm, it's showing it for Pisces. Oh, it says sidereal. Huh. Well, I guess it doesn't. I guess it is um, showing the sidereal planets. We'll see Mars and Saturn are going to be in Aquarius. And then here's Neptune, which rules Pisces. And the Sun and the Moon and Venus. So Venus and Neptune are pretty close. And the sun and Mercury are pretty close. So communications really could go down tomorrow. Um, Mercury is a planet of communication. So I expect some satellites, some, I don't know, some, maybe even um, cell phone towers may be affected, cell phone satellites, that kind of thing. As you see, um, Jupiter and Uranus are way over here. So... They're going to be kind of to the left, and I'll show you that here. So in the sky, um, this is what time it is now, but you can go back up here. 
And we'll go back to 1130 this morning on Sunday, where I'm at. 1030 let's go to 1030 where, where the when the eclipse is going to start tomorrow as you can see the the planets aren't really lined up so if you're looking up at the sky in, in arizona we're going to be looking straight up um at the sun at around 10 30 in the morning uh, it's going to be kind of hard to see and sit there with your neck for two hours watching the moon go across the sun so I kind of recommend watching it on TV and, you know, in other countries, indigenous people, um, you know, Hindus also believe that you should be inside and reflecting on the new year and they don't go outside for an eclipse. Nor do they leave food out, um, vegetables and raw meat. That could be a real problem in the United States. So, uh, if there's any raw meat, um, I would not go out to eat on an eclipse. Uh, no surgeries should be done on an eclipse. So just keep that in mind. Um, you might say that's that's false. Scientists might say that, but it's it was a thing um, in the Hebrew Bible. So and in Hindu beliefs, and they're the oldest astrologists in the world. So and Chinese astrology. So I suggest. Yeah, following that. But when we look up in the sun, it's not going to be totally eclipsed, so I don't know if we're going to be able to see the planets. But um, if you're where I'm at or near, nearby, um, Jupiter and Uranus will be to the left of the sun. So when it goes dark, you might be able to see those two planets to the left of the sun. They're not going to be like in alignment in it in an up and down alignment. And then to the right will be Mars and Saturn. I don't know if you'll be able to see Saturn close up. Well, that, yeah. And so, so like at 1130, they'll look like this. Still on the left-hand side, Jupiter, Uranus, Venus and Neptune, Mars and Saturn on the right. And then by the time the eclipse is over, um, they'll be in the same positions and Mercury will be above the sun. And Mercury is the fastest moving of the planets. And not the asteroids, but um, we'll look at the asteroid and the comets um, with the Mobile Observatory app. Like I said, this is more of an astrology app, but it also has, has these astronomy features as well. Okay, so now if we're looking at um, this mobile observatory um, app, uh, it also has widgets that you can use. And I have one up here, but let's take a look here at widgets. Oops, Bixby. Let's look at mobile observatory. Pro. I have the pro version. I think I, I changed to the pro version because it had the eclipses. So that it's like eight to nine dollars, I think. But it has five widgets that you can choose from. And I have this one and I have this one on my phone. So you can choose from those two and set them wherever you like. So as you see, See on my first um, my home screen, I have it there, and then on a screen a screen over, um, I have it here. And this goes, and this is kind of cool for just um, see. I'll show you that there's the node nodes, and then here's the eclipse tomorrow. So you can click on here. Oh yeah, you have to click up here, and then it opens it up. And then I'll go to my computer to show you the rest. But you can also size these according to whatever size you want. I like this one. You could size it bigger or smaller. I just keep it up there small. Um, and these are just the planets, the planetary. Uh, but this is more informational. Uh, I always just check out the app anyway. So um, let me go to my computer and show you the rest on that.
Okay, so now let's go to the Mobile Observatory Observatory Astronomy app. It looks like that. And when you um, click on it, it opens up uh, these boxes. These are all, um, you, you can move them around. But the very first thing you want to do is go up to this. And when you buy um, the Pro version, it'll say MO Pro up here. Otherwise, there's a free version. I think the free version does not have the eclipses on it. I'm pretty sure. So, um, like I said, it's like eight, ten dollars to buy the pro version for life. So, up in the left hand corner, um, you'll see the menu <clears throat> tab, and you click on that, and it brings up all this stuff. The very first thing, again, you want to go to the uh, left hand corner of the the menu, and I mean the right hand corner of the menu, and click on the settings. It's that little star up there. And go to current location, two boxes down. And you can add as many locations as you want, just like, or, or yeah, I don't think that's in the Daft Moon, but in this astronomy app it is. And you can have saved locations here. Like I said, I was going to go to San Antonio, I wanted to go to San Antonio to see the eclipse, uh, but we're not going to make it. So I don't know why it says Chicago. Oh, that's a different San Antonio. <laughs> so you just click on that, and you can uh, select a location, user defined current location, show a map. Yeah, and then choose it on the map, I guess. So if you're traveling, if you're going somewhere, um in the path of totality definitely um definitely click on that and add it if you're not in your home state so that's where you would find that and that's important because it's going to show you what time and everything just like in the other app and then so you hit the back button and your location is set and I'll get into this another time, but you can always click on solar eclipses. And it's going to bring up the information on that. Total April 8th shows you the total solar eclipse will occur on Monday. 1117 is its maximum. And the magnitude. It, the complete eclipse is visible from my location at your location. It's partial, partial with a maximum at 1124 and a magnitude of 0.69% or 62%. Then you click on that, and it's going to give you um, some information about it. 1013 is first contact with the moon. And the sun, the maximum at 1124 will be just below the sun, upstairs, taking a bite out of the sun. Yeah. And this, this is a cool part where you can zoom in on both the sun and the moon. As you could see, uh, I don't know if I had my phone, I'll show you on my phone. But you just click on the sky view. For more information, if you want to see what it looks like in the sky, and then click on the time of the event, and there it'll show you when it's at its maximum here in Arizona. That's what we're seeing. And you can go by the month, uh, you know, minus a month, minus a week, minus a day, minus an hour, minus a minute. So if you go minute by minute, it kind of shows you how the sun and moon will. The direction of them and how the moon is passing over the sun, which I think is a cool feature of this. And then you just you can zoom out with your fingers, zoom in and zoom out, or you could see the planets. 
And on on this one, you can see where the um, the Devil's Comet is, and it's called 12P Palm Brooks. It's going to be right over here, not so close to Jupiter and Uranus, <clears throat> but over here in Aries. You can see down here. So if you wanted information on that, you could also get information on that. And it has a little glyph. And there's another one also, another comment just below that. Cameras, Zonowitz, Zonowitz. And this 12P Ponds Brooks is, um, is that bright green comment that we've been seeing in, and everybody's talking about. It doesn't look like it's going to be anywhere near the sun, so. Some states will see it. But you can move this map all around. You can go by the minute. You just keep clicking on the minute down here. <laughs> see how far the sun's it's going to be slow, you know, from where we're at. It's four minutes for totality and over the path of totality. But in other states, it'll be very slow. So that's kind of a cool feature of this. That's my, one of my favorites. And then you can even see the whole universe when this is happening. If you make it really small, you can see the Milky Way. There's the Milky Way. You can see the galactic plane, the celestial equator. All these lines are visible. And you can adjust all this. You can adjust um, what stars you see, what planets you see. It's all in the menu. <clears throat> I'll be um, showing a little, showing more of this. There's Atlas comment. And we'll dive more deep into these apps as I start teaching more. But since we're talking about Mercury being so close to this, um, yeah, see, Mercury is right there. Can be very close. Um, we can go and look at where the planets are at. After we're done looking at the eclipse, it, it'll already be at that time. So if you want to see where all the popular objects are at, the Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, and Mars, or Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, and Neptune, and Chiron. Well, let's, I have them all lined up on in my previous objects. Previous objects, you just go to this, and you can you can look up your planets and and put them in order, which is what I've done here. So I put everything that's in Pisces, Chiron's in Pisces, Neptune, Venus, Mercury, Moon, and Sun. Then right next door is Saturn and Mars, and Neptune rules Pisces, so that's a planet to watch. And Chiron. Uh, I've been told it is an important asteroid to watch or to be aware of for spiritual and astrology purposes. Um, it is the wounded healer and Neptune rules Pisces and it's about what we envision our lives path to go in. Uh, Venus is of course the planet of love and Mercury is the planet of communication. So Mercury being so close and in retrograde it's kind of a big deal let's look at mercury and if we go back to april 1st we can see well let's look at it when it goes direct let's see what it says mercury is stationary begins its prograde motion on 423 uh late at night No, that late at night. See, and uh, this is what I like about this app too. As you can see, the um, what retrograde looks like. So when um, 
when Mercury started its retrograde motion, it was up here, and then it kind of makes this turnaround and goes in a totally different direction. And so this shows you kind of the path. It has like, here's the planet, and then it shows you the path that it's going, which wouldn't be a regular path for it because it's going retrograde. Um, so that's that's why I really like this app. You can kind of widen it and you could shorten it to see the path of retrograde, which I think is really cool. And it says Mercury is stationary on 423 at, uh, what is that, 8 o'clock? 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 8 o'clock. Prograde motion. Mercury moves from west to east, prograde motion in sky, but close to its inferior conjunction, Mercury overtakes Earth, and then it appears to move west in the sky. So it hits all these different points that it wouldn't normally hit. And that's why communication um, seems to be obscured and weird things happen with that. <laughs> with our satellites and our cell phones and even sometimes television and that kind of thing. Um, well, that's all I think I'm going to show on that. Um, I'll show you um, how to direct, uh, which is kind of cool with this Mobile Observatory Pro. This live view uh, is another way to um, gauge where um, it's like a compass. It's an automatic compass for wherever you're at. So right now my my phone is facing the this way, and so that's what it's seeing. I'm gonna go grab it and I'll show you. Show you what it looks like. Oh, okay. So I, I grabbed my phone and it is working. Is showing you as I move it, it's 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 looking up the stars where I'm pointing at. So right now the moon, I can see where the moon's at. And the sun. And then I'll show you what it looks like when I have it in my hand. Then I'll show you what it looks like live in my hand. Okay, so I've disconnected my phone from the computer. So I can show you this. Um, you just click on this live view and you'll be able to see it in here. And so it's an automatic compass. So wherever I point it, it will be and this is really the only place I can point it for you to see, <laughs> but it's like, it'll find the, whatever you're looking for, um, like in this direction that is pointed, you can see Virgo and Leo up in the sky. So if I was outside it would, and facing this direction, that's what it would, that's, those are the stars up in the sky that I'd be looking at. So I think that's a really cool feature on this. Um, the Daft Moon app doesn't have this. So there's so many things on this on this app for you to look at that um, I'm going to have to do a whole other video. I just want to do this for the eclipse, and I hope you use this. Um, tomorrow you can look exactly up into the sky, and it'll tell you where the sun's at. Okay, so it's a great compass. It's great to have even if you're, you know, on a hike going for a walk. It'll tell you exactly where you're at and your coordinates and everything so that's a really good compass it's a really good app to have out and it's very inexpensive so again that's a mobile observatory astronomy app and the Daft moon phase app thank you for watching and um i hope you'll like share and subscribe to my video um i'll have more uh, on the apps i use um of course on the uh, for the Dream Spell Calendar app. I've been meaning to do that for a long time and I haven't done it yet. Um, but um, peace, love, and light. And I hope everybody keeps their mind, body, and soul clean tomorrow for the eclipse. Um, in case anything were to happen, be prepared. 
Um, hopefully no accidents. Let's all pray for peace, love, and prosperity. And embrace with the new moon. Um, we definitely set our attentions to embrace what is for our greatest good with the new moon, which will be happening at the same time as the eclipse. So thank you for watching again. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you again here on Star Season Star Breeds on YouTube, Facebook, and social media.